So the next in our essential skills series is the jointer. When I first got started using a jointer, I would end up with curved pieces that weren't straight and there wasn't a lot of content that really went over how to use a jointer. So today I want to talk about the proper way to set up a jointer, how to use it and, and get the most out of it. Let's come in close and I'm gonna show you how to set up the jointer. So jointers are great because they have very few features. You have a cutter head, a fence, which is usually adjustable by uh, about 45 degrees, and then you have an infeed and an outfeed table. For a jointer to work correctly, the outfeed table needs to be in line with the cutters. This is a segmented cutter head. Uh, these are quieter and better with figured grain. Uh, there's also straight knife cutter heads, and the straight knife cutter heads are a little bit easier to set up, um, but these are definitely worth your while if you can get one. So it's very simple. There's two hand cranks here that raise and lower the infeed and outfeed sides. The outfeed side, once you set it, you're going to set it and forget it. And the way that that works, you can see it's coming down here and it's going up. What you want for your cutter head is it needs to be just a smidge, a hair higher than your outfeed table. And the way that works is you take your largest known straight edge and you get it and then you just take your cutter head and it should just come in contact with it. So you can see here my ruler's moving and just barely lifting up. That's probably even a little bit too high. So you can see here, that's gonna be perfect right there. Just at its very highest point, it barely moves the ruler. So let's talk about the infeed side. So the way a joiner works is it takes material and then since it's lined up perfectly with your outfeed table, it creates a straight edge. So your infeed table can be adjusted as well, but you really don't want to take more than about a 16th to an eighth of an inch cut. Anything bigger than that is just going to be causing safety issues as well as really stressing out your machine. Uh, and if your board's that warped, you can just take a few more passes, but really most boards at a 16th of an inch will take you one to three passes to get completely flat. This right here is called a rabbiting ledge. This can actually be removed. If you want to create a rabbit on your board, you can run it through here. Also, if you have a board that's wider than your jointer, you can remove this and the guard joint just the capacity of your jointer, then take a piece of plywood and put it underneath that area and run it through your planer and that will give you a, a straight face and then you just go back over and plane off that extra piece that was hanging off of your jointer. Um, now let's talk about how to properly run a board through here safely. So obviously number one on safety is safety glasses and earmuffs. Uh, I have the guard taken back here for demonstration purposes, but you always want to leave your guard on. A jointer is a nasty thing and uh, you really want to be safe when you're doing it. So the physics of a jointer is you push it through until you have enough meat on your outfeed side to be able to hold your board. There's different schools of thought, but I really think that you should be using push paddles. The board is pushed through and as soon as you have just a little bit of meat on there, your hands go to the opposite side and push this way. And that, this is your reference face here, this outfeed table. So you don't want to be pushing on your infeed table because you're going to cause your board to joint at a slant uh, or a curve depending on the when you move to the front. One of the biggest things I see beginners do is they'll push way too far here on the back and you could see the board comes up like this and then they'll go over and push on the outfeed side and that will create a subtle curve on your board this way from that rocking motion. Once you've jointed a face of your board and gotten it flat, you can then use your fence as a reference area. So then pressure changes a little bit. It goes against your fence. You go just past your fence and then it goes over to the side here where you're pushing flat against your fence and down to your table. Um, so the way that would look with push sticks is you push through and then you get over here and you push kind of towards that way. You push at a diagonal where you want to keep 
the reference face on your fence. Another thing that is a good little tip with jointers is to move your fence over the course of time. If you're not doing a lot of boards that max out the capacity of your joiner, you don't want to create wear on one side of your knives rather than the other. So about once a month, I'll move this just a little bit one way or the other, and that helps with wear. There's two styles of guards on a jointer. There's the kind of American style, which is this clam style that comes out. And then there's the English style you see that is always over the cutter head, and that can raise and lower. If you have one of those, you basically want to keep it just above your board. And as you're pushing through, you reach your hands over and go through like that. And that'll keep you safe. That way, if there's a kickback, your hands are going to hit the cutter head and nothing's going to happen. So uh, let me show you how I joint this with the machine on. Okay, and then once you've jointed it, the easy way to tell if it is flat, knowing that this is a flat surface, is I just take it, I put it down and make sure there's no sunlight showing through, uh, and I'll even pick it up and you can feel a really flat board will feel like it's sort of suctioned to the outfeed table. So I always test it on my outfeed table. Same thing with the edge of our board. We look at it and you can see there's no gaps, there's no sunlight through there, there's no rock to it. Um, and you could even, if you wanted to, take a square and hold it up to it or take a square and measure the edge just like that. Another great way to tell if your board is flat is I'll take a pencil and I'll put marks across the whole thing. And that way when I joint it and I turn it over and look at it, as long as there's no pencil left, I know that I've hit every piece of my board and it's flat. One of the things that's really important when you're pushing a board through is people have a tendency to put their hand or their push block behind the board. And that's really dangerous because if you slip, you can catch your cutter head. Uh, even with your push block, that could be really dangerous. So you want to always kind of push from the top on your outfeed table. Make sure your beds are clean and wax. Just a little bit of wax or three in one oil on them will keep your uh, bed sliding easily and will help make it so it's not hard to push. Also, if you take too deep of a cut, it can be really hard to push and that's where you get into trouble. So keep that cut light, keep your beds clean and waxed and make sure you don't put your fingers behind your board. So joiners, not much to them. Pretty easy to use if you follow some basic safety stuff uh, that shouldn't be too intimidating. I know that jointers are kind of one of the last tools that woodworkers add to their shop. So I'm gonna do another video on how to joint boards without a joiner. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, check me out on Instagram, stay safe in the shop, and thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.